Good afternoon, this is Mark Mason in the Comics Waiting Room, and I am here with Richard Starkings at Phoenix Comic Con. Richard, hello. Hello, Mark, how are you? Good. Is this the Comics Waiting Room? It is right now. It has been for you because we were swamped just now and you've been waiting patiently, <laughs> thank you. I have plenty of time. Uh, Elephant Man just keeps going and going and going and in the face of a comics market that cuts off most books at issue four these days, you're headed towards 40 issues. Actually more than that because we had a miniseries and about four one-shots, so we're closer to 50. That in today's market is nothing short of miraculous. How do you do it? Um, it's the book I've always wanted to write. It's the book I've always wanted to read. Um, I didn't envisage it as a short run book. Um, I've been very, very fortunate to receive the support of Image Comics. I think um, I'm very fortunate that Eric Stevenson likes the book. Uh, I've worked with a lot of great artists like Marion Churchland, uh, Moritat, uh, Ladrone, obviously, who's close to finishing issue four of Hip Flask. Um, I've worked with Shaky Kane. And I think that um, after about 20, 30 issues, people got the idea that it was going to be uh, some different artists, an ongoing story arc. And um, I work hard to make it sell. I come to a lot of shows. That's where we are now. We're at Phoenix Comic Con. I was in Ottawa two weeks ago. Uh, I'll be in England in uh, November. I'll be at San Diego. I'm going back to Canada. I'm going to Montreal for the show there because um, there's a new market for books and the market is people that don't go to comic book stores but come to shows. So if you're not prepared to push your book, it's not the market to try to sell a book. Books don't sell themselves. Well, and I imagine in a certain respect that Elephant Men is a book that's difficult to describe in a solicitation, but when you can hand sell it, it probably really does sell itself. Uh, word of mouth also, you know, um, and I guess, you know, a book can sell itself once you've got the word of mouth out there, but this isn't the uh, year that uh, Walking Dead was launched. When Walking Dead launched, even though it was at low numbers, there weren't so many competing titles. You know, Marvel really hadn't expanded their trade paperback program, which, you know, Marvel DC soak up a lot of cash in the system by putting out a trade paperback or five trade paperbacks every month. Um, but Image's back catalog is, is a much stronger back catalog because uh, Vertigo and then Manga educated people to read series of books. So a lot of my crossover readership is Preacher, 10 volumes available, five hardcovers, um, Swamp Thing, Transmetropolitan, Fables is a big crossover audience with Elephant Men. Um, and you have a reader that's been educated by Vertigo and the manga libraries of 1 to 12, 1 to 28. So they're looking to get in on a series of trade paperback. Um, we're also picking up a lot of readers from Comixology. Uh, you know, our numbers are constantly growing on Comixology. And we had the flip book of Walking Dead 86 last year. And we saw a big spike in readership of Elephant Man because there's a lot of readers of Walking Dead online who go straight to Chew, Elephant Man, other books that, um, uh, you know, speak to that audience. And I think that the sort of domination of the market by the big two is at an end. You know, we've had 20 years of Image Comics and there's a massive library of Image titles which are very easily accessible. And uh, Marvel and DC have forgotten how to make their product accessible. That's why they keep having to stimulate readership with events. You know, you, you talk about trade paperbacks, and I think one of the interesting things about the Elephant Men series is how you've handled trade paperbacks. You you put together substantial trade paperbacks. They're not... We always have at least 100 pages of back matter. And that's my preference as a reader. You know, again, I'm putting out the trade paperbacks I like to read. And if you look at the kind of trade paperbacks we were involved with as designers, you know, the Astro City series of hardcovers and trades. Um, we like working with people who like to really put together a package. We did the Danger Girl Absolute Edition in the sketchbook, and Jeff Scott Campbell is someone who really likes to give extras because, you know, 
he and I are both people that love DVDs with lots of extras and commentaries and back matter. So we really like to provide readers with back matter. And we, we collect convention sketches, we do galleries of sketches. Um, in the next volume, volume five, we've expanded the cover stories. Um, which uh, we put out as an individual book, and now we've expanded that to include a lot of the covers that are in Volume 5. Um, you know, and I just think that people come to uh, your book wanting an experience that isn't just about, you know, like the vanilla DVD, you know. And, and I came across that description of a DVD uh, a few years ago, which is that, you know, vanilla means you don't even want to taste it once. You know, you don't want to find out any other flavors. So I really like to be my own commentary and sort of tell people what I enjoyed. You know, in Volume 1, I talk about all the comics I grew up with, 2000 AD, Countdown, all the TV shows, Doctor Who, UFO, Planet of the Apes. Um, and I really like to sort of infuse people. I remember there was a great magazine when Star Wars came out, the original Star Wars. Um, and it was a Marvel magazine, it cost 95p in England, and it, it, it used photo reference to illustrate all the influences on Star Wars. And there was little essays about World War I dogfights, um, uh, the um, Fritz Lang's Metropolis movie, and how C-3PO related to that. And for me it was great uh, behind the scenes that made me realize that George Lucas didn't copy uh, all these elements, but what he did was he synthesized them and then sort of breathed them in and breathed them out as Star Wars. He wanted to do Flash Gordon and there were elements of Flash Gordon in Star Wars. So I really appreciated that magazine. I don't know who put it together. It was genius. Um, so I like to give back and, in, uh, and infuse younger readers. I'm 50. A lot of my readers are 18 to 28. So they're maybe not aware of what an impact Blade Runner had, Alien, um, Planet of the Apes, you know, um, all these different uh, movies that are now sort of old B movies, the way I look back on This Island Earth and War of the Worlds and Time Machine. Um, and as you know, anything uh, of quality lasts forever. You know, you can watch, I've watched Time Machine and War of the Worlds, the original George Powell ones, with my kids and they love them. You know, so I like to sort of, you know, uh, honor the history of comics, honor the history of science fiction, and sort of pull people along and say, you might like to check this out, you might like to check that out. And, and that's the forum that I have, both in the comic itself. We do a 44-page comic, $3.99, but there's no ads. If there is an ad, it's for somebody else's book, and I will talk about that book, and I will tell them what I feel is good about the book like Bulletproof Coffin or uh, other books on the market that I, I, I want to point people to. Reed Gunther is another one, another great image book. So, um, you know, I think it's cheating the reader if you just sort of slap together a trade paperback and say, here, buy this again. And it's sometimes more expensive. Well said. And uh, you definitely give maximum value with those books. Thank you. They're huge. They're really well produced. They look great on the shelf. And I'm a fan. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me no today. No problem. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.